Well, here we are again. Feels like we just did this, doesn't it? <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I did promise a part two, and here it is. Now, it's going to be a bit of a mad dash through the questions, because um, I'm going skiing this weekend. Actually, by the time you listen to this, I will be skiing in Turkey. Yes, that's right. Um, you might imagine it's all sort of hot and um, sunny and stuff all the time, but no, we have proper winters, and we have mountains, and you can ski down them as well. <laughs> Anyway, this is uh, not answering any of your questions, which I promised I would do to the best of my ability. All right, one thing, I'm going to be in trouble if I don't do this. Hello to delicious cupcakes. Hi. No more shouts out in this, so I'm um, sorry, but um, I love you all, and I do appreciate every single one of you who comes by, listens, leaves comments, and shows their appreciation for my work. Really, um, I wouldn't do this just for the sake of it, um, I do it because you guys make it worthwhile. So thanks. Keep coming back for more and more. <laughs> right, let's get going. Okay, I'm a bit of a rush today, so I'm going to motor through these as quick as I can. Um, so basically, I'm just looking at the part one comments, and I'm just going to answer anything that looks remotely like a question. Hmm, wow. A gazillion and one comments before I find one. There we go. Does your real-life hair resemble that of your avatars? Ooh, it used to. <laughs> yeah, it used to when I was younger. I had It was a bit of a scruffy, dark mop on top of my head. Um, going a bit grey now, to be honest, but that's all right. I got my first grey hair when I was 15, so I think I hung in there quite well. Not going bald. <laughs> all right, nothing wrong with uh, grey hair. Ask any bald man. Mm. All right, this is a good one. I like this one. Do people in Istanbul like the song Istanbul, not Constantinople? Um, they might be giants, I think it was, uh, about 20 years ago. I don't know. No idea. It's not really something that you sort of comes up in conversation very often. But um, I think I mentioned... Someone was about to come in the room then. All right, what was it? Uh, yeah, there's a really cool radio station in Istanbul called Radio XN. They play it occasionally. I guess they wouldn't play it if no one liked it. So, there's your answer. Mm. Do, 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 do. Oh, no, no. Look at this. Okay. Wow. Lots of... Lots. Ah, come on, there must be another question here somewhere. I'm sure there are millions of questions. Do, do, do. Wow. I'm having to scroll down about five pages worth here to get to a question. All right, here we go. Oh, no, that's not very nice. Okay, I'm not doing that. That's not actually a question. That's just something bit rude. Hmm. Still, I'm sure there were loads of questions here. Where are they all? Oh, look at this one. Dead or alive? Who would be your top three dinner party guests? Um, clever people who were nice and are willing to answer stupid questions from a, a mere mortal like me. So it would be um, probably Nikola Tesla, um, Albert Einstein, and who else is really clever? Um, Oh my god, let me think. Marie Curie. Okay, just to get, um, because I'm not just like some kind of guy who just hangs out with other men. That's really boring. All right. Mm. Somebody upset that I didn't answer how old I was? Uh, tough. Still not answering. <laughs> Mid-40s? No, that's not about me. All right, hanging in there, but uh, not quite mid-40s yet. Oh my god, there's another million and one question. Uh, okay. Million and one responses. Wow, you guys left a lot of um, responses and comments on this one. Damn. There's bound to be a question coming somewhere. Oh, we know that you're an educator, but what grade and subject do you teach? I think I've covered this before. Um, I teach academic English to people whose first language is not English. Um, it's fun. Work in a university. Um, hang out with young people all the time. Uh, they don't seem to be too appalled by having this old man trying to teach them. Very much an enjoyable job, um, of which for which uh, narrating is a nice distraction, but only a distraction. So I have a very nice life, get to teach uh, young people, try and influence their future in a positive way, and I get to tell all you good folks some stories. Life is just lovely. You're the best, Doc? Okay, that's nice. Not a question, but yeah. Okay, here we go. This might end quite quickly, actually. I thought there were many more questions than this. Oh, right, here we go. What words of wisdom would you have for people aiming on either writing or reading creepypastas? 
Um, if you're starting to write creepypastas, go to my video, which explains um, everything you need to do to write a really good one. Um, from last year sometime. You'll have to search around um, my videos to find it. How to write a viral creepypasta, I think it's called. Um, if you're lucky, I might leave a link to it in the uh, video description here. But I'll probably forget, so... Mm. How did you choose your name? Um, didn't I talk about that in part one? I just tried... Why, okay. <clears throat> like loads of other people, I just sort of put creepypasta in there somewhere and I tried to be cool and European. So it originally started as a Dr. Creep and Vaughn pasta. But that was a bit too much of a mouthful. And I got fed up of writing it, so <laughs> I shortened it. And this whole Dr. Persona seems to have taken off quite nicely. Here we go, another one. What part of the US did you live in and how long? What did I like most about the US and what did I like least? Oh, okay, um, I lived up in the north near the Great Lakes, of New York State. Uh, upper state New York. Beautiful, very cold in the winter, very hot in the summer. Um, life was very easy. Uh, this was quite a while ago. Um, life was very easy, I had loads of money. Money was quite easy to come by. Legally, I should add. Um, I had more money than I needed and had a good bunch of friends. Ate too much, drank too much. Um, typical sort of early 20s bloke, really. <laughs> So yeah, America was nice just because I just was partying all the time. Uh, yeah, not saying any more about that. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I like most and least? What did I like least about America? I don't know. Uh, life was too easy, really, for me. Yeah, I got a bit fat um, as a result of eating and drinking too much. It was just a bit too easy. I didn't really have to push myself very hard to achieve um, a degree of success in my time there. Um, sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? But you know what I mean? It's like life's a real struggle in a lot of places in the world. And you can cruise by very comfortably in the United States if you so choose. And I think a lot of people do so choose. Okay, I'm not, I hope I'm not offending anyone there, but um, it was a bit of a shock how little I had to do to sort of get by in life. And you adapt very quickly to that, to be honest. All right, anyway, I'm not going to go into that in any more detail because I don't know, I'm not making any sense to myself, never mind to you. <laughs> oh, I like this one. What is the story that grabbed your eye the most that you haven't brought to light just yet? I've, um, I've just been sent one by an author and... Um, bloody brilliant. It's a ghost story that isn't a ghost story. And I'm continuing not to make any sense at all today, aren't I? Okay, so yeah, so it's, um, on the face of it, it's um, a pretty traditional haunted house ghost story, but it isn't at all. That's going to come up in about a week and a half. I've got a couple of uh, other narrators doing some guest spots on that. So, And when you involve other people, it always takes a bit longer to get together. But it's going to be really good. Um, since I opened my subreddit, Dr. Creepin's Vault, uh, link to it on my channel page if you're interested in submitting a story, um, I've, you know, got to work with some really, really fantastic authors. Um, if you haven't listened to Ellie and Elmer, a story I did a week or two ago, you know, just stop listening to this garbage and go and find that, okay? That's an example of something that's coming up by trying to form relationships between me, the narrator, and the authors by giving them a chance to share their stories. And that's the most satisfying thing when someone says, hey, you know, I like your style. I would love you personally to read this story. And it's starting to happen right now. And there's a few people whose work is just bloody brilliant. And you think, well, you know, you've got a future in this. You've really got a future. And I'm going to be lucky to say that I got to t read your stories before you were famous. And um, yeah, another one of those coming up very soon. Uh, ooh. Okay. The... Uh, previous Q&A descended into a bit of a chaos thanks to one particular young man who continually left nasty comments. Um, let me get past that section of it. <laughs> there we go, gone. Okay, I wish him all the best. Uh, troubled young man. Don't know what his problem was. 
Okay, anyway, on to the next question. Do you enjoy karaoke? No, I don't. Um, I haven't got a particularly good singing voice, to be honest. And it's as simple as that. All right, where are we? Do you ever play horror games, video games at all? Oh, yes. Um, since Resident Evil number one, I would say, I've been into the survival horror genre. Um, yeah, Silent Hill, right the way through all of those. Um, just finished Resident Evil 7 last week uh, with my son, which was nice. Well, actually, you know, he'd give me the, com the controller every now and again, so here, have a go for 10 seconds. I'd fail and then he'd take it back off me, so... <laughs> Proved a much better way of getting through the whole game as quickly as possible. Hmm. All right. Is your hair the same as the picture? What the hell? Not that one again. Yeah, I've just said that, so hang on. Ooh, what's this? Have you had any paranormal experiences or any other creepy experiences you feel like sharing? Good question. Me and a few other narrators might have a project in line where we all come together on one video and talk about creepy things that have actually happened to us. So I'll save my story till then if that's all right. And I will let you know if it's going to come out at any point. <coughs> mm. Okay, more and more and more. Sorry, this is really boring for you. All I'm doing is scrolling down the question, the uh, comment list. I think you're absolutely better than a certain other narrator. Um, da, 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 da. Thank you very much for saying. I agree. <laughs> okay. Dentists. No. Okay. What's okay. Mm. Oh, God. Sorry, guys. Okay. Somebody trying to guess who I was being nasty about. No, it wasn't that person. Da, da, da. What's your favorite drink? Okay, a few people asked that. All right. Um, may I take this chance to guide you towards a certain late 90s film called The Big Lebowski? Um, need I say more? Okay, it's a little drink called a White Russian, which is um, a vodka-based cocktail. Um, I haven't had one for a while because it's difficult to get all the ingredients you need in this country without spending an arm and a leg. But... <clears throat> yeah, that's the one. Okay, so White Russian. Highly recommended. Um, if anybody out there is a recovering alcoholic, my apologies for recommending that people go and get drunk. You know, um, the people in question know who I mean, and they know I'm genuine about that. Ooh. Which software do I use to make my music? Um, Sony Acid Pro. Because it's easy, basically. I know how to do it. There's better stuff out there, probably, or at least as good. But, you know, I, I'm pretty much old school. If I find something that I like in terms of technology, I stick with it. Because, <laughs> until someone says, look, I will literally show you how to use this. It's easier and better. So, yeah, um, nearly all the music's available. I'm going to have to start another SoundCloud channel because I've used my free allocation up. So a lot more of my stuff will be available. Um, if you like the background music, it's all there. Very careful about making it royalty free, not infringing on copyrights. But um, that's how I started actually, before I was narrating. I uh, was making the background music. Nobody listened to it, so I thought, well, <laughs> I'm going to put this to some use. So that's when I started uh, narrating. And um hope you don't mind the results. Who's your favorite band? What's your favorite song from that band? Okay. Impossibly difficult question. Um, it changes every week. This week it's King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And if you don't know them, they're awesome. Australian band. Two drummers, loads of guitarists, and just ridiculously stupid lyrics. Um, they're, this is the song I like most at the moment is Rattlesnake. So just say the word Rattlesnake over and again about 50 times, and then you've, you've mastered the lyrics to that song. All right. But it'll, it'll be different again next week, so ask me again if you want. Do you really have a doctorate? No. If so, what's it in? Why did you choose that field? No, I don't, so I don't have one. <laughs> Finished my master's degree last year while I started narrating, which is why the first six months of my channel um, passed by without anybody listening, because I wasn't really sort of fully invested in it. Um, yes, I'm not... Not a doctor, but a master. Hmm. Oh, this is a pretty good one. 
Are you more spooked by realistic creepypastas, or ones that include a greater degree of fantastic elements? Uh, it's all about the realism. That's not to say that fantastical can't be an element of the realism. Um, so yeah, things that are sort of like glitch in the matrix, things that sort of, you know, you look at it and on face it's a, ver it's a representation of our reality, but there's something very slightly off about it which throws everything out of kilter. And you think, damn, that completely changes my outlook on life. And it can be a really small, simple thing. But yeah, that's... A fantastical stuff can be interesting, but it's like you want things that question your life and how you've been living every single day of it and think, damn, maybe the whole thing is wrong. Maybe everything isn't how I imagined it. Maybe things are a lot worse. <sighs> okay. What's your take on the prevalence of rural Eastern Europe as a setting for lots of creepy pasta stories? That's a good question as well. Wow. Um, I think it's kind of similar to what I've just said about um, realism. You know, we have this idea of like Western culture and Europeans, and it's, it's you know, for me, it's all very safe and secure. I know where I am. You know, there's always going to be someone speaking English. I can get on a train. I can get into a hotel. I can be very comfortable. Everything's the same. And then all of a sudden you get to Eastern Europe, which you think might be the same. And then there's always this idea of there's this underbelly, undercurrent of something extremely different that you don't know about. So it's that sudden slipping from feeling comfortable and being sure of yourself and your surroundings to suddenly finding yourself into a place that's radically different without realizing it. And I think Eastern Europe represents that for a lot of people, me included. You're awesome, you're awesome dude. Yeah, like that one. Thank you. Okay. Du -du -du -du. Okay. I'm running out of time, to be honest, guys. Um, I'm, this is my lunch hour, and um, I've got to go to a meeting this afternoon, so I'm trying to um, churn this out before I have to go off to a meeting. So sorry if I'm rambling, but mm, there we go. We might be getting near the end of it at some point. If I've missed your question again, just, you know, what What the damn hell, I'm trying my best here, guys. <laughs> cats. How many, and what are their names? Three cats. Um, Mr. Kitten. Um, what's the other one? Oreo, because she's black and white. And um, Junior Fat, because he's the youngest one and he's very fat. Not very nice names, but, you know, what we're going to do. Um, how did you meet your wife? How long have you been together? Um, I was her bartender. I gave her a free beer and um, it worked. <laughs> been together quite a long time now. Does the narrating and being a YouTube celebrity have any effect on your relationship? I'll tell you when I become a YouTube celebrity. I'm just getting started, guys. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> well, like I said, I appreciate each and every person who comes by the channel. I don't think I'm a celebrity yet, but I do appreciate the fact that some of you out there like what I do. Ooh. What about authors like Dean Coote, Stephen King, etc.? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I was talking about my love of Stephen King in the first part. Oh, yep, there you go. <laughs> you know, just like answer that. Doctor Sleep and 112263 were the names of the books I couldn't remember. Would I like to read one to you? I'd love to, but I don't think Mr. King will give me permission. Oh, this is a lovely one. What in movies and writing actually scares you when talking about basic primal fears? And I'm... Um, Going back to the element of realism that I was talking about earlier, it's like, you know, when everything on the face of it looks normal and something that is part of our everyday uh, environment, culture, and society turns bad. And um, I think that whole creepy clown craze that was going around last year is really a sort of a sign of that. It's like, you know, you, you know what clowns are, you see them uh, so often, and the fact that they look human, but it, the... Um, Appearance is exaggerated, or it should be nice and friendly, but in fact, the, you know, the smiles are too big, and the teeth are too big, and the eyes are too crazy. It's that slight deviation from what culture and society and humans conceive to be normal and safe and friendly. And when that goes slightly off, it only takes it a slight difference to make it damn creepy as hell. Alright, here we go. 
I hope I'm answering these questions okay. Da, 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 da. More scrolling. Oh, is that... Does anyone in my personal life know that I'm Dr. Creepen? Um, a select few who don't really care. <laughs> yeah, not many, but it's like that's because most people aren't interested or um, they get angry with me for doing this. They think I should be doing something uh, more serious with my life. Mm. All right, we're getting near the end. This is great. Well, it's not great that I'm getting near the end, but I'm... Um, you know, you must be getting fed up of listening to this. Have you had any copyright issues? Yes. Um, people making false copyright claims. It's the absolute scourge of um, narrators, especially when you use, especially when like I make my own background music and um, take a bit of time about it. And, you know, it's so, sort of a labor of love for me. So when someone puts in a copyright claim saying that you've stolen their song, you're like, you cheeky little bugger. Uh, it's happened a couple of times. Um, you just write it out. It's just one of those things. YouTube system of dealing with it is better than it used to be, but it's still not perfect. So you just wait a month and then whoever's made the false claim just, you know, they don't do anything and then it's all good. You proceed as normal. How's life in Istanbul? Do I speak Turkish? Oh, it's all right. Get up, go to work, come home, watch a bit of TV. All American TV shows are on here, so um, I get to watch anything I would would be able to in other countries. Do I speak Turkish? Evet. <laughs> yes, a little bit. Not perfect. Should be better for the amount of time I've been here, but what are you going to do? Mm, do, do, do. All right, you know what? I think I'm getting near to the end of this. All right, if I've still missed any more questions, which I probably have, um, I'll do another one of these again in a while. I don't know, what does a decent number of subscribers sound like? Don't say 20,000, because I'm nearly there. I'm so far behind in this 15,000 subscriber special that it's nearly 20,000 already. Um, I'll be back again soon. So let me round off by saying thank you again. Love you guys. Um, without your support and um, positivity, nice comments, encouragement. I wouldn't be doing this anymore. All right. Thank you. Um, new story coming up tomorrow. Another one on Wednesday and another one on Friday. Got some really good ones. Some more collaborations. Really trying to um, more and more help. <coughs> okay, the voice is going. Trying to more and more help up and coming members of the narration community get started by giving them a guest spot on my channel. Um, you guys all always uh, respond really well to that, and I thank you on their behalf too. Um, I was starting out not that long ago, so it's nice to be able to sort of um, help other people get uh, on the ladder towards being successful as well. So, good stories coming up. Please come back, please. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a great Sunday. I'll see you all. I'll see you all really soon. Okay, bye.